Sex is the life force energy that runs through us all. Can you use sexual energy for your spiritual evolution or perhaps for emotional healing? Is it even possible? Clinical sexologist Dr. Martha Tara Lee will explore all these and more on Eros Evolution on Om Times Radio. Hi, this is Eros Evolution, where sexuality and spirituality meet. My name is Dr. Martha Tara Lee. I'm a clinical sexologist based in Singapore. And um, Eros Evolution came about because I wanted personally to explore the link between sex and spirituality. And I really didn't know where to go. Today, I have with me a very accomplished speaker and many, many things. Uh, he has been actually involved in exploring the link between sexuality and spirituality for a really long time, much longer than I have been since 1998. So let me introduce Lee Harrington. Uh, he is an internationally known spiritual and erotic authenticity educator, gender explorer, eclectic artist and award-winning author and editor on hu human erotic and sacred experience. He's been traveling the globe from Sydney to Seattle, Berlin to Boston and is based in Anchorage, Alaska. Teaching, talking about sexuality, psychology, faith, desire and much more. And uh, he has been academic and a female adult film performer who has just transitioned from female to male, is an outspoken philosopher, sexuality podcaster, kink and bondage expert, and has been blogging about sex and spirituality since 1998, as I mentioned. Uh, his books would include Sacred Kink, The Eight Full Paths of BDSM and Beyond, More Shabari You Can Use, Passionate Root Bondage, and Intimate Connection, and more. From what I understand just now, having a little chat with Lee is that he's published at least seven books, uh, or if not more, some of them which are like, you know, with other people. So you can find out more about Lee on Passion and Soul. Today's show is about, hang on, <laughs> today's show is about authentic sexuality and sacred king with Lee Harrington. And we'll be exploring a little bit about the fictional story of Fifty Shades that has been catching the public eye. We will explore, ex examine the rich and surprising crossover of authentic kink, kinky sex with sacred journeys. How can we use these tools for deeper connection with ourselves and with others while following our own personal truths? So welcome, Lee Harrington. It's such a delight to be here. Thank you for having me on. I really am excited to be here. Yeah, I'm always a little bit nervous just before the guest speaks, whether they're still there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. We, we, we had a little chat just now. You are so comfortable in front of the camera and also uh, you sound wonderful. <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I uh, blame my parents lovingly for having me do theater when I was very young. And then when I, as you mentioned before, I spent many years doing uh, work in the adult film industry. And between the two, my inhibitions are very few. <laughs> you also have a very strong uh, presence. You know, it's... Uh, I guess not uncommon in, in some of the people that I know of who are um, into BDSM because they are just so aware of themselves and they have explored, uh, I guess, the shadow side and they are just so strong. Sometimes it's just un, uh, um, a little bit unnerving because they are just so confident. I'm, you, honored. Do, I'm honored that you say that. Uh, do you get that I feedback think... though? 
I think for me, it is less about exploring BDSM and mm. more about spending time with yourself mm. because I have the same feelings when I talk to uh, various yogis who spend time reflecting on the universe and on their own nature. I feel the same way when I talk to people who have been doing journaling even their entire life. I find that people who have spent time knowing themselves and taking even five minutes a day to reflect upon how they're feeling can change how we interact with the world at large. Mm. Yeah. Um, for a very long time, I was told to really work on myself and I would start getting upset. Oh, you know, how much more work do I need to spend on, my, on myself? You know, am I not uh, good enough? And it wasn't really recently that I really become so much more comfortable with being by myself, spending time with myself and journaling and really understanding the value and importance of uh, being alone because that allows us to process a lot of things that's coming our way as well. Do you spend a lot of time uh, alone by yourself with certain practices that you do? One of the things that I came to understand from some of my spiritual teachers is that there is a difference between spending time alone mm. and being lonely. <laughs> because many of our cultures have what I refer to as the cult of the couple, that we become so obsessed that we are not complete people unless we are someone's better half that we are half a person until we meet someone else. And that is the difference sometimes in exploring uh, what you refer to as BDSM, what other mm. people call kinky sex, mm. what I think of as creative sexuality, of finding out what you find alluring, interesting, or fun. And uh, when I think of that, if you have more power inside yourself, it is easier to exchange power with someone else. If you don't spend time with you, how do you know what you are giving to another person? So in my own personal practices, I joke, but it is how I think of it. I take myself out on a date once mm. a month. Maybe I go to a museum. Maybe I go to that movie that, you know, my partner didn't want to go to with me. Maybe I, you know, whatever it might be, I might go on a long hike with my dogs. I spend with myself the time that I would go with someone else on a date, even to go out to a really nice restaurant with a book. And when the waiter says, is anyone else joining you, that I will say, I'm really enjoying time with me. Thank you so much for asking. Mm. And for me, taking that time to say to myself, you deserve to be loved the way you want someone else to love you has been a really good practice for me. Is it perfect every time? No. There's days where I'm like, I don't want to go on a date with me. I don't want to be around me <laughs> because there are days I don't like who I am. There are days where it's not where I'm not happy. Why would I want to be around someone who's not happy? That's okay. Just like being in a relationship with someone else, you have those days, and then the next morning you wake up, you look in the mirror and go, okay, today is going to be better. I'm going to practice being a better friend to me. Mm. I, I sense a lot of uh, kindness uh, towards yourself as well. So let me ask, uh, because you brought this up, what's the difference between uh, BDSM and kink? BDSM is an acronym mm. that is short for bondage and discipline, dominance and submission, and sadism and masochism. And sadism and masochism being about intense sensation, either giving it or receiving it, not in the clinical way of hurting butterflies, mm. you know, uh, or hurting children. Very, very different. So BDSM is those six things. Mm. Kinky is a big umbrella term. Yeah. That is those six things, but is also cross-dressing, is also wearing fetish clothing, is also people who want to do erotic role-playing, who enjoy spending time pretending to be a puppy dog or pretending to be a boss and a secretary. Mm. So it is a bigger umbrella term mm. that uh, 
because it is confusing sometimes when yeah. you say BDSM and what you mean is I like wearing rubber clothing. Right. It is confusing. I'm I'm saying the wrong term and I'm the sexuality educator as well. <laughs> this this language is evolving in our culture and when and I am speaking in English and there are <laughs> other terms there no there are other terms because I I see a lot of people because of the movies right mm -hmm. because of movies that go out or because of television that goes worldwide that people are picking up english language words but there are other words in french or german or spanish or i'm sure in chinese and i know in japanese that are words that don't quite translate to other to other languages that express better the words that i am using come from an english language culture right that for example when we say sadism and masochism we're referring to a french historic figure and a uh, and another european historic figure that therefore it is based on european language languages not based on other cultures and it's important that people look at what their local cultures and their culture of upbringing is when looking at their creative and authentic sexual experience instead of saying that the languages that are being published the most are what is right mm. yeah i totally agree with that uh some of these words really doesn't support us in terms of expressing ourselves um, at least more in Singapore than some of the other Asian countries we have a lot of slimming ads and lots of women uh, have issues around the way they look you know like um, there's one fixed beauty or similar to what you're saying which is when it comes to word the word doesn't really express what is um, you know, what they're trying to say that happens. <laughs> yeah, very much so. And when we think about the idea of authentic sexuality, mm. it's important to look at what is authentic to you. Mm. So we'll and, have a yeah, short please. break and then we'll be back after this break. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. The future of Internet Radio is here. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. The Conscious Parenting Radio Show provides inspiration and resources for loving, empowering, and respecting your children and yourself. Join me, Timothy, every Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time as we consciously explore proven ways of living together in happiness, health, and harmony. My name is Monica and I'm the host of Co-Creating Now. Give yourself an opportunity to connect with your all-knowing higher self and manifest joy, love and peace together every Tuesday, 11 a.m. Eastern. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Om Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Om Times endeavor. Host your show with Om Times Radio Network. What if business could be fun? What if business is the adventure of living? What are you choosing? Where do you do business that makes it easier, more fun, or more joyful for you? We'd love to see where you do business. Connect with us on Instagram at Joy of Business or Twitter at Joy of Business and share your pictures with hashtags Business Done Where and Joy of Business. Let's change the world with business. Bringing you the best of the conscious minds in the world. Om Times Radio, your conscious lifestyle on steroids. Welcome back to Arrow's Evolution, where sexuality and spirituality meet. My name is Martha, and I have an amazing, wonderful, experienced sexuality educator amongst many other roles he plays, and his name is Lee Harrington. His website is passionandsoul.com. 
So this website uh, has links to his Facebook, uh, Twitter, YouTube. Um, and I was just asking Lee just now that uh, his website is also going through a revamp. In two months' time, you will be able to subscribe to his mailing list. And from there, you can actually follow every single thing that he's doing. He is definitely somebody that you need to be following because he is the one who's actually exploring the connection between sexuality and spirituality for so many years now. And um, the many, many things that he's doing, including uh, performance and art, definitely somebody you will want to follow. So, uh, Lee, welcome back. Thank you. And as a note, Martha, I, I do also, I forgot to say to you earlier, I do have an RSS feed so that every mm. time I post on my website, you can get updates on my podcast and my journal entries and other information that I share. Yeah. So I I, I know you have this podcast as well, and it's called Passion and Soul. It's uh, it's it's on like a aggregate aggregator kind of uh, radio network. Yes, called the Erotic Awakening Podcast Network, mm. which is run by a delightful couple named Dan and Don, who also focus on the place of spirituality and sexuality. Mm. But they have a. Uh, I tend to come from a more. Uh, academic sometimes perspective and uh, they come from a very playful conversation perspective. Mm. Great. Uh, it's very important that we have uh, different places that people can go and mm. all of us have something to bring to the table, to our different pers perspectives, backgrounds. And you are really fascinating because you explore so many things, including the performance side of yourself. I I always feel really embarrassed about myself because um, being brought up in the Singapore education system where you either conform or you uh, are considered an outcast. So even though I really wanted to perf pursue the performing arts, I never felt I could because I was told by everybody around me, it's not sustainable, I'm not going to be able to survive. And so I just followed the next natural thing for me, which is to uh, work at being a communicator and I became... Uh, uh, basically uh, into PR, marketing, advertising for eight years. And then that's when I slowly started to realize that my calling is uh, to help people. I'm very happy that I'm able to help people through the area of uh, coaching and also bringing in sexuality inside. Uh, unfortunately, because of my own success in Singapore, being typecast as a sexologist only, um, I don't get clients who come to me for life coaching or other areas that I'm interested in, like spirituality or even shadow work that I'm uh, interested in uh, right now. Do you find that you get typecast in, in, into a, a box or maybe that's less of an issue in the U.S.? It does very much happen. I, for example, uh, was the artist and wrote some work before I even did Sacred Kink. I was I did some work with Raven Caldera, who is another person who works in these middle spaces. And I found that that between that and then writing Sacred Kink, that I got typecast as the pagan, the person who doesn't understand you know, monotheistic Christian and Islamic sp and Jewish spiritual perspective. And I'm like, yes, I do. Those are the, my, those are my milk cultures. That is where I was raised. I do understand and I can translate all of my work into those places, but I was typecast. I think the human mind tends to want to put things in boxes. It's easier. It is quicker. And I don't think it is meant maliciously or in any mean way. I think we just tend to, as people, do that because it's easy. And one of the things that I not necessarily fight against, but that I try to show, I offer up, is lots of different voices so that people can go, oh, every person has many sides. Mm. For example, most people who are listening will understand that you have the face that you show to your best friend. And the face that you show to your girlfriend or wife or husband or partner, you have the face that you show to your coworkers. You have the face that you're sh you show to your parents. You are still the same person. You just have different faces. 
And so you, for example, have the face that talks about sexology, Mm -hmm. but you also have the face that talks about coaching. You have the face that talks about doing work with shadow. They are all true. They're just different faces. Mm. Yeah. Uh, When it comes to uh, religion, I I used to be a Christian and now I consider myself more of a spiritual person. I believe that we can find God in all religions. And this has been difficult for some of my family members to understand. They thought that I have abandoned God when actually I have a deeper connection with all things spiritual. And that has made me a better and happier person. Uh, What would be uh, your uh, connection with uh, kink, for instance, and spirituality? So uh, to answer that, I need to rewind a little bit. Sure. I was in college and... I had a friend of mine who uh, was sharing a story with me and we were talking about religion one night and faith. Mm. And he said to me that he had a, an epiphany that the world is like a stained, that faith is like a stained glass window. You have green for the Druids. You have purple for the Catholics. You have yellow for the Buddhists. And together, you make a rose window. You make a huge stained glass window of all of faith. And I thought that was very beautiful until he said after me, he then said that if there was no sunlight behind it, we couldn't see any of it. And that was to me a big moment where I went, oh, that no matter your filter, whether you see that energy of the universe as deity or as God or as internal wisdom, whatever it is, most people on this planet have some way that they filter something bigger or something deeper, deeper inside themselves or bigger out in the universe. People I know who are devout scientists have something bigger they believe in. They believe in physics, which is beyond themselves. It's another language of belief, another language of tapping in. Mm. And I don't think it's everyone necessarily, but a large bulk of humanity does look in these ways, but we look at it with a different lens. And so I think for people who are Mm. exploring their connection with kink and sex, sorry, Mm. with kink and spirit, Mm. it is looking at how do we have those moments of either an altered state of consciousness Mm. or a moment of connection with that sunlight. Mm. And when you talked about shadow work, Mm. to have a shadow, there requires there to be light. Mm. We can't have a shadow, that no shadow can exist. Beyond that, it is darkness. It's no longer shadow. Oh, yeah, that's right. (laughs) And so I really look at the idea of using kink And all of those formats as a tool, just like some people use meditation, just like some people use prayer, Mm. just like some people use ascetic practices like going on a fast or going on a pilgrimage, Mm. that kink is another tool to be able to explore these things. Yeah, so there's this expression, all roads lead to Rome. It's just a different (laughs) way. And um, because I'm a a sexuality educator and kink was one of the scariest things for me. So while I was training, I I, I read so many books. I went to BDSM dungeons, things that I would never have thought of doing because, you know, coming from um, Singapore, Asian country where sexuality is very much repressed, uh, to go way out there and explore kink was just un, unspoken, unknown of. And so I get what you mean exactly about how uh, it's very uh, possible for it to be just another way to get into altered states of consciousness and to have a very uh, spiritual experience from it because I have felt some of this uh, myself. Um, but for listeners out there who are hearing this for the first time about King, um, maybe if you could describe a little bit some of these spiritual experiences that people could experience if um, they pursued some of uh, what King is about. That that would be useful, I feel. Yeah. So 
one of the ways that I think about uh, about altered states of consciousness is to break it down into a few categories that people enter into an alter, altered state of consciousness, for example, I mentioned it already through an ascetic practice, the idea of minimalizing, minimizing, excuse me, taking the world down to a narrow path. So an idea that people think about with religion of an ascetic practice is a monk who chooses to give away all of their worldly goods and focus on nothing but the, about then divinity right? They focus on nothing but that narrow path, and it's a way to enter into an altered state of consciousness. For other people, it's about rhythm. And say, people who have a transcendent experience uh, listening to drums, or who have those experiences just feeling their own heartbeat. Some people do this, you mentioned Tantra before, through Mm. breath and breathing Mm. in and out and feeling your body do this. There is what I refer to as the path of the flesh or feeling your skin, closing your eyes and just take a moment to run your fingers over your skin and be present with how you're doing right now, which in a culture that says shut off your body, don't think about your body, don't do anything, just keep working, that is transformative. In all of these, kink gives tools to do these different paths. So, for example, with rhythm, those people that enjoy dancing around a fire or who love the rhythm of music, people who can close their eyes and just listen to a beautiful song and lose themselves can use something like spanking Mm. or a yeah. rhythmic sensation of a flogger, which is a very thick bundle of leather straps that th- hit the skin in a rhythm, mm. can use that to let their body and that rhythm take them out of their their now. Their, uh, what I sometimes refer to as the monkey mind that chatters, chatters, chatters all the time. Or Mm -hmm. those little tiny voices in your head that say, you're not good enough. You need to do Mm -hmm. more. You need to do more. Great. So we have a break and we'll be back to explore more about this. Bringing a more conscious lifestyle to your world. Om Times Radio, IOM FM. Know what to do, just can't figure out how to fit it all into your busy life? It doesn't have to be that way. Hi, I'm Ellen Baysford from Seamless Life. Join me every Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern on Home Times Radio and learn the how of conscious living. Let me and my guests help make your life seamless. Radio Namaste leads you down the yellow brick road into portals of consciousness with the blue-collar goddess as your host. Interviews with humans who could be famous or just popular, and answers to everything are on the agenda. Tune into Om Times Radio and drop in on Thursdays at 3 Eastern. It's a different brand of enlightenment. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Om Times Media one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. As difficult as it is to believe, there are places in Africa where human traffickers sell albino children and their body parts for use in magic rituals. Humanity Healing International is actively working in Uganda to change this paradigm. The Albino Rescue Project finds albino children who are at risk and places them in safe schools and environments where they can learn and grow free from fear. To learn more or to sponsor a child, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Free your mind with Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Hi, this is Eros Evolution, where sexuality and spirituality meet. My name is Martha. I'm a clinical sexologist, and I'm actually based in Singapore. My website is uh, erosecoaching.com. I also work with clients by Skype, and I 
am into all kinds of things, in especially relating to spirituality. You can find my guest today, Lee Harrington, at passionandsoul.com. As uh, he mentioned just now, you can find the link to his podcast and also his books, as well as his blog and pictures to his performances through his website. So I definitely recommend that you check out his website. So just before the break, we were talking about ex- having ecstatic practices so that we can explore how to have altered states of consciousness through kink. And Lee was talking about how you can have a rhythm and the path of the flesh. So rhythm on the skin, say for instance through flogging, can actually help people to get into that altered state of consciousness. Uh, is there anything else that you would like to add to, to what you shared earlier, uh, Lee? No, I, I think for me, again, going back to what we talked about before about being authentic, these tools, whether it is rhythm or choosing to build a ritual in your sexual practice or doing something that is challenging to push yourself beyond your boundaries and create ordeals that you come out the other side with, these don't think, things don't work for everyone. Just like there are some people who might not enjoy sitting down to meditate, Mm. but can walk and meditate. Mm. And one is better for you than another. Mm. I think it's important to, when you try new things, to know that it might not work. It's just like when you are in the bedroom and you try something, it's okay to say, you know what, we tried it. Maybe we'll try it one more time, but if it's not good for either of us, it's okay to try something else. Just because it works for someone else doesn't mean it's perfect for you. Mm. I I love what you're sharing and the way you're sharing this because it's so clear and open and transparent. Uh, A lot of people associate uh, kink with abuse and uh, Mm. pain is all bad. And because you're explaining it in in such a clear way, uh, in such an embracing way, that uh, I would like to invite listeners to uh, stay open, be open. You don't have to go into it if you are really uncomfortable. However, just understand because there are people who are different from you and uh, because we don't understand something, often we go into judgment and that's the easiest thing to do. Uh, What I'm saying is you don't have to embrace kink if that's not your thing, but at least for this show, try to understand why some people might find this very interesting for them. Yeah, and I think part of that is that people hear the words, and the words are scary. And so people hear sadism, and they immediately associate it with people who are killers, Mm -hmm. because that is the same word. But what they mean, what somebody means when they say sadism in the BDSM world, is what they mean is they like to do intense sensation. Mm -hmm. And so it is the same as somebody who likes to go for, who is a marathon runner. Mm -hmm. That person enjoys intense sensation. You don't, somebody who likes BDSM, they might enjoy having somebody spank them, but they do not enjoy stubbing their toe. It's still like I have seen people in a erotic situation who they will have just taken this place where I see them screaming and moaning and being hit with whips. They get they they are then untied. I'll see them then turn around and literally get as like hit their toe on the edge of attack and cry and be like that hurts and I start laughing because you you just had this thing that to the outsider looks like you were suffering, but the suffering came the moment you hit that nail. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. <laughs> it is, and uh, but to the outside viewer, people would think, oh, when you are hit by a whip, that is what's wrong, mm, yeah. and. And I think that there is a story based on what people think they know or what they know from where they are coming from. I know people in uh, – and I think it is also important to consider that even if you enjoy various forms of alternative sexual practice, it doesn't mean it's okay to have abuse happen. 
mm-hmm. that there is a difference between intense sensation or role playing. There is a difference between that and abuse. Mm, yeah. Even if, say, both of them involve people hitting one another, what is the intention behind it? And is it causing harm? Beyond all that, did everyone consent? And mm. consent is what matters. Mm. Did everyone agree to this? Mm. Is everyone happy going in? Is everyone happy coming out? And if the answer is no, there is a possibility that something involving abuse is happening and abuse is wrong, even if you put a pretend label like BDSM on it. The mm-hmm. label does not make it okay. Yeah. Uh, so people do get hurt and uh, we. I, I guess I want, would like to ask a little bit about what you think about Fifty Shades. I, 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 because I follow all the the conversations around Fifty Shades, I, I know why there are people who are really upset about the, the book and the film. However, uh, I also know of people because of so much noise out there, they actually tune out. They mm-hmm. can't really be bothered. So I would like to use this opportunity to ask you um, what you felt about Fifty Shades. So with Fifty Shades of Grey, It was meant to be a bodice ripper, a romance novel. Mm. It's just like reading, uh, you know, a Daniel Steele, a Daniel Steele book, or like reading any other cheap paperback book that is meant to go, oh, that's a little hot, and then you put it away. Mm. That's what it was meant to be. It was never meant to be a serious novel or a tell you how to do kinky sex. It was never meant to be that. And so therefore it wasn't written to be that. It was written to be a little bit thrilling, a little bit naughty. Unfortunately, it is the BDSM book that was picked up and sold worldwide, which is, in my opinion, a little sad because it makes people think that that is what BDSM looks like. If it inspires you, and has you go, oh, this is interesting, I want to learn more, it did a good job. However, the book itself involves abuse because both parties at different times at the books, because I read all three books, Mm -hmm. both parties did not consent. The female character does things where the male character says, I don't want to be touched without being asked first. And she regularly breaks his consent. She says, I need time to think about this. He stalks her and breaks her consent. That is the part that makes me sad. Mm -hmm. The practices, the practices are also not so good, right? The actual behaviors in the BDSM play, they're not so good. But I am less concerned about that as a person than I am about that line about consent. Is everyone happy, healthy, and whole? And unfortunately, with Fifty Shades, the answer is no. But that's because it was supposed to be a fun romance novel with a little bit of naughtiness and excitement. I actually share the exact same opinion as you. So it's very upsetting when people say, oh, yeah, it's... Uh, it's uh, uh, so many grammatical errors. It's not a good piece of literature. It's, it was never meant to be. <laughs> yeah, I have so many. Uh, I know of so many sexologists who are just up at arms. They're really angry about it, and I, I like the really calm way you're saying this. Um, some some of them are just so angry. Uh, but you're using words like that makes me sad. <laughs> well, I find that anger. Mm. When people say angry words to another person, that other person goes on defense. Mm. They become defensive. And if I think I am being attacked, I will either tune out or I will pull up arms as well and maybe yell back or be angry back. And two people being angry back and forth doesn't help anyone's message be heard. And so if I want the world, let's say I am a kinky sex person, because I am, and as a note, that doesn't mean I like every type of kinky sex, because I don't. Mm -hmm. I might enjoy 
restraining my lover who enjoys it, but I don't necessarily enjoy, say, having people, you know, I don't enjoy hitting my lover with a whip. It's mm-hmm. not what we enjoy together, a thin whip. Mm-hmm. We both enjoy what we enjoy together. Mm-hmm. And so if I am wanting somebody to understand me, it is, I think for me, more. it is better for me. It's not even better for them. It's better for me to say, oh, how do I talk in their language? And so if I am talking to someone who is academic, why shouldn't I say, I really enjoy an altered state of consciousness? If I am talking to someone who really likes sex, why not say, I like having fun and getting really sexy and being creative? And if I am talking to someone who is spiritual, saying, I really enjoy the idea of taking time, communing, with myself and my partner and setting the world aside and being present with one another just as I would be present with any other thing in my life that deserves it because all three are true. I'm just saying different words to say the same thing because really hot sex involves setting the world aside and being present with my partner. And being present with my partner includes entering into an altered state of consciousness where I leave the world aside and go into somewhere different than how I operate in my day-to-day out in the world when driving a car. It is different. They're all true. Mm. I I love how clear you are and that's what I I guess you have a lot of experience being an active author, blogger, podcaster. You also teach and tour internationally using university, uh, doing university lecturing, conference appearances, uh, doing sacred sexuality and kink rituals. And you also do private teaching, training, and coaching. So those of you who are interested in the work that Lee does, please check out his website, passion and soul so just very quickly um, may i know where you actually lecture uh yeah I'll, we'll do this after the break Radio, Om Times Radio, IOM FM. Have you bought into the idea that you have to work hard for your money, that business is hard? I will share some dynamic access consciousness tools to get you out of your own way so you can create a business that actually succeeds. Join me, Simone Millicis, on the Joy of Business at 4 p.m. Mondays Eastern. The truth is, you can't change the world if you're broke. I know, I tried. Isn't it time you turned your life's calling into a profitable, freedom-based business? I'm Michelle Barr. Join me every Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern for Sacred Success. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Om Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Om Times endeavor. Host your show with Om Times Radio Network. Om Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Om Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. Free your mind. Expand your soul. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. (laughs) 
Hi, this is Eros Evolution, where sexuality and spirituality meets. This is Dr. Martha Tara Lee, and welcome back. This is the last 15 minute of the show, and you are listening to Eros Evolution on Om Times Radio Network. You can share this link with your friends right now. It's uh, omtimes.com forward slash mobile. With this link, your friends will be able to listen to any of our shows 24-7 just by having this link. So it's pretty cool. No need to ha- download any applications whatsoever. So just before the break, I was trying to ask Lee about where he teaches. So uh, Lee, would you just indulge me in sharing like some of the places you lecture in? Absolutely. I have done uh, I have done work, as you mentioned, at universities, whether it is coming for one guest lecture at uh, a gender studies or a psychology program. I've done work where I am the, say, the keynote speaker for a week-long sexuality awareness week at universities, as well as doing stuff by Skype for areas I can't come to. I do a lot of stuff going to sexuality and spirituality conferences to to talk about both those crossovers as well as doing things just for those topics. I do standalone weekends where I work with a small group of students. I just did one in London where we had 20 students, uh, not just talking about, but mostly doing actions of playing around. And I say play because, again, it's about exploration, Mm. playing around with different types of ways we can use kink to explore our bodies, our altered states of consciousness, and our spirit. And I think all of these tap into the different ways people learn. Some people learn through hearing. Some people learn through their bodies. Some people learn through books. Everyone is different. Um, yeah, I, I agree. Um, some people take sex or anything related to sex or sexuality so seriously that um, if they can't get it perfect the first time, then they don't want to. They don't want to go there. And you just learn from sometimes just doing. And mm-hmm. some people they get so in, intense intense about the whole thing and that's kind of where we get into a little zone and it's really fun to watch when um, at least sometimes when I run workshops my clients they forget themselves and they just get into the process of learning and the play and the um, their inner child comes out and that's really beautiful to watch so I suppose that this is where uh, the word play is actually the best word to use Though I want to validate for people out there who are what I think of as erotic engineers, <laughs> if you are that person who wants to get it just right, I know people who, for example, practice rope bondage because you can focus on it and you can focus on the knots. And once you have the idea of how to do the technique right, mm. you then have a framework to learn how to connect to another person because you have confidence in what you do know. So if you are someone who wants to learn all of the technique and have confidence that way, I do think it is a valid form of sexual creative exploration. Thank you so much for saying that. Uh, It's very important not to make other people who are different feel bad, which I just did. And it's important, you're right, that um, there are some building blocks there, some basic foundations, framework you call it, where uh, they get comfortable with it and then they can go from there where their creativity and different things can come in. And this is where uh, in flow, it's about having the skills and knowledge and then a little bit of difficulty and that's where we really get so absorbed uh, in some kind of a zone that, uh, uh, you know, when we partake in play, that's really fun. And one of the things, I uh, have written two books on how to do rope bondage mm. and one book on why. And uh, and that one was an anthology. But in my second book, it was really important to me because, say with rope, as I said, it can be very technique focused. How mm. do I do this? And in the second one, it was very important for me to talk about intent Why are we doing this? Because sometimes if you are so focused on the technique, you can forget there's a person there. And are you doing this because you want to have uh, a chance to just set aside the world and be with your partner? Are you doing this because you want a body challenge? Are you doing this because it's artistic and you want to be an artist and it's not about the sex at all? It's just about being pretty. Everyone is doing any of these things for a slightly different reason. And if we stop and look at our intent, 
it will help us examine with our sexual and spiritual practices what we're doing. Because if what I want, say with meditation, Mm -hmm. is to be able to empty out and become in a place of no mind, if I am doing classic sitting exercises, if I am sitting, but my legs hurt and my back hurts and I can't enter into a place of no mind because I am focused on my body hurting. Mm -hmm. I won't succeed because my intent and my practice don't line up. If my intent with my lover is to have fun and be silly, but I am worrying about what not to tie, you know, how to tie someone up, I won't succeed. We won't succeed in having fun as compared to picking up a piece of rope, wrapping it around someone and playing around and giggling. Mm. What is my intent in this? Mm. And so I think it's important to check in with the people that we are with of what is our intent for tonight? Mm. Is our intent to look into each other's eyes? Mm. Precisely. You have to find what works for you, just like you mentioned just now about how it's just all different language and just different paths for different people. I I feel that the intent uh, is really a big part of it. Uh, when I have done uh, rope uh, workshops before, I couldn't really understand why people would spend all this time uh, doing all the ropes, uh, the knots, uh, learning all this technique and then having tied up your uh, partner then later on have to untie the whole thing and I can understand appreciate why some people would find it um, very uh, therapeutic meditative because uh, they get into the zone that I'm talking about just now uh, however it's not it's not really my thing and uh, it is important I feel uh, even if you don't understand it to not belittle other people who are just different And I think for me, when we think about rope bondage, which can be very complex at times or very simple at others, I think of it as dancing, Mm. that there are some people who love to learn all of the complex steps and moving backwards and forwards of ballroom dancing. Other people just want to get on the dance floor and be silly and not (laughs) care about the steps. Some people want to learn everything precise. Uh, Other people, or look at it as music, that with sexuality as being a music. Some people want to learn how to be in a formal orchestra and get up to being first chair. Mm. Other people want to learn all of the all of the pieces, so they can go to a jazz dance, like or go to a, a, a jazz club or go to a jam, a musical jam session, and play. None of these are wrong; they're just different. And I know people who have come together in relationship, and one of them was very classically trained, right, in music. And one of them is very freestyle, have fun with it. Mm. And what I've seen them do is the classical person lays down the rhythm, lays down the beat of how they're going to play, and then the other person comes in and adds in all of those other pieces on top of it. Mm. And we can do that in our relationships. We can do that in our sexuality and we can do that in our spirituality. Let's say everyone around you is praying, but you, what you resonate with is music. As everyone around you has their hands in prayer, why not let that organ music or that perfect gospel piece play in the back of the, your mind while your hands are clasped in prayer? You can do both. Mm. And in sex, too, your partner enjoys uh, doing things with uh, bodies penetrating one another. Mm -hmm. But what you really like is a little bit of role playing. You can do both as long as you talk about it. And what is your intent? Precisely. Yeah, it just makes everything better. It's uh, it's just like the spice on top of the rice (laughs) for us Asians. (laughs) Or the curry with the, you know, the... Uh, I don't know the the food for yeah. yeah so it's 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 just it's not that it's uh good or bad it's just that it's actually helps enhance and make it better yeah and I think food is another beautiful metaphor <laughs> that I know some people that they give them a recipe book and they can make anything mm. right and I have other friends that give them a give them an open refrigerator of leftovers and they can make anything. Mm. Both are good. 
Yeah, it's just uh, different strokes for different folks. <laughs> Very well said. <laughs> so, so tell us, uh, um, because I, I, I know um, shibari is. Uh, does it just mean uh, Japanese rope bondage? Because you have two, at least two books about uh, shibari, right? So it is a tricky term. Yeah. Because uh, in Japan, uh, my understanding, I have actually not studied in Japan. I have studied with many people who have, so I am one generation removed. Mm -hmm. uh, the work that I do, shibari, is more uh, used in the United States and various parts of, uh, of Europe and into Russia uh, as a way to explain uh, things that are inspired by Japanese rope bondage. Uh -huh as compared to, and sometimes have the same work, sometimes don't. While kimbaku is used more as a classical term, and they have slightly different definitions in English, but they don't all perfectly translate. It's like I was saying before with language, it's tricky. Mm. And so the work that I have done came from being inspired by Japanese style rope bondage, but also includes things like American style macrame, Mm. And includes things, a little bit of stuff of uh, John Willie and the work of uh, what is called Western bondage. Mm. A lot of what happens worldwide is that we get ideas and they are nowadays being blended into these shared creations. There are people who enjoy the classics, right? There are people who enjoy classical Chinese food. And there are other people who enjoy things that are now Chinese American oh. or Chinese Peruvian food. Mm. I love Chinese Peruvian food, right? Mm. Everyone is different. And that is my hope is that people from here go out and find what is theirs, whether it is through my books or through their own journey. Mm. So uh, we've come to the end of the show. Uh, so uh, well said, Lee. Thank you so much for being on this show. Go ahead, uh, everyone. Find your own path. Find your king. Find what makes uh, you feel good in your body. Next week, I will have uh, Sally who will be talking about recept receptivity uh, and how this can help you to have a more fulfilling life. So tune in to Arrow's Evolution next week.